welcome to Dorker Realms. With the latest edition of Dungeons & Dragons, the role-playing game hobby has become more popular than ever, with games becoming more streamlined and placing a higher emphasis on the role-playing aspect of the game. While many new players are brought into the scene by D&D, there is a movement amongst some players called the Old School Revival, taking inspiration from the adventure and game design of the earliest editions of D&D and bringing them into the modern era. These games and adventures emphasize the weird, the challenging, and the hardcore. Here at Dorker Realms, we take a group of players more accustomed to the new school and run them through old school adventures. Will they adapt to the challenges before them and find fortune and glory, or will their modern sensibilities lead them only to despair and madness? Hello, and welcome to Dorker Realms. This is part six of Blood Moon Rising, Though the adventures can be listened to in any order, we recommend starting with the first episode of any given adventure. We go now to the table to delve into Dorker Realms. So, Neil Goblinson has recovered. They're setting up for the evening feast in the meadow. So, did we want to go tonight or are we going to go tomorrow, first thing? I presumed you'd want to, I, I figured you were wanting to go tomorrow. Um, I mean, that makes more sense, probably, which is why, in the dark. Which is why uh, I thought it was a waste of the potion, because he would have been healed by the morning. Yeah, I thought we were going tonight, which is why I was like, oh, um, he wouldn't have been healed tomorrow. He wouldn't have oh, no. two health. Oh, oh, right, no, sorry, then after the next day, you're right. I'd have to heal myself, too, if I killed him tonight. No, um, you could. You would have healed a full oh. day by that point. But yeah, okay, so I guess we'll just go to the feast then, and then go to bed. Alright. I'll put in um, ten coppers. Oh, yeah. You gotta pay for your feast. It's not free. And then because we're like the adventurer type, you you know we gotta overpay. Yeah, I'll put in twenty coppers today to cover my share. Uh, but Gron shows up to dinner with uh, two new onyxes glittering in his beard. <laughs> Everyone seems very impressed and comes up to ask Gron to tell them stories of his deeds. How you feeling now that you're out of the uh, enthusiastically regale, uh, you know, whatever they what they would like to hear. <laughs> How you feeling now that you're out of the church, Neil? Uh, probably uh, five years smarter, really well rested. I gotta start drinking stuff. Oh, it's, you know the prune juice? Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff for you, man. I hear with uh, the older you get, the the better it is for you know. For what? Your digestion, which we know that you've already been having troubles with since you were talking about that the other day. It helps you poop. Uh, you know, I was trying to be a little more delicate than that, but yeah, it helps you poop. It's fine. My back door's not that delicate anyway, so. <laughs> well, anyways, uh, what's been going on? Just, you guys just catch me up, right? Yeah, I, uh, you know. We're we catching want... you up outside, how about that? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I sometimes make rain noises with my mouth. Uh, mm, uh, I'm catching what you're throwing, pop culture. Anyway, yeah. we got a bunch of, uh, you know, stuff. I got a sweet blinging medallion. Oh, I got a horse named Horsey. That is so on brand for you. <laughs> I parked it next to Muley. Parking is the correct term, right? I think it's called docking. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I saw that at the monastery. Um, yeah, it's kind of like that. There's a hitch. It's at the shack. The shack? Yeah, our shack where we sleep. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. How Neil's... long have you been out? <laughs> it feels like ages. Neil's been in the monastery so long, he doesn't remember what it's like to sleep anywhere else. <laughs> uh. Alright, well... So much talking. I guess I'll just eat and then go to sleep. I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, like I said, you just make it long and short. So, uh, you partake at the delicious evening feast. Uh, the helm is passed around once again for uh, donations. I believe Bindel already donated. Would uh, any yeah, of the rest of you... Yeah, Gron would put in 20, 20 Yep, copies Ari also put in 10. Alright, Neil... <laughs> oh, you mean uh, the, the old guy that has, uh, I'll give you five copper. All right. So uh, 
as the feast winds down, they prepare to light the bonfire for the night, and Father Uric begins regaling the villagers with tales of uh, St. Garin, as per usual. And then, you guys want to turn in for the night? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Is anyone, what's your, mm-hmm. everyone other than Gron is at max HP? Yep. I think so. Is Gron below half? Gron is at three out of eleven. Oh. He was at four out of eleven the (laughs) other day, so he doesn't get to heal unless he takes a full day's rest. Yeah. But he he didn't want to not participate in the game. Sure. He's really enjoying... He would literally rather die. Well, I don't know. He's still alive. All right, well... Uh, Should I take the healing skill? You could take the healing skill before we go to bed. Instead of the, uh, what was it? Bless or Yeah, yeah. Bless is the one you had in the morning. Okay, yeah. Well, you can memorize spells in the morning. Oh, I, okay. That's good. So, uh, you wake up the next day, and, uh, the atmosphere in the village is back to, uh, how it was in day one when everyone is, was excited before orcs and then <laughs> and demon the demons attacks, and shit. you know, but now everyone's, uh, the place is popping again, everyone's excited, uh, they're telling stories about uh, Grand Glitterbeard and his uh, companions. I remember at the beginning I asked what you wanted your symbols to be, and I believe Bindel's was uh, just like a light blue stripe, basically. And I, I can't remember what Grand's was. I think it was like a it gem. Did, oh, it was just, it was just, just beard, beard with a gem set. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, right. just wanted to double check that. All right, so uh, there's a nice atmosphere as everyone's going about their morning chores. All right, let's uh, let's go check that tomb, but let's be very vocal about it since we have a legend we're growing. Let people know we're going to. We are off to ensure that the tomb of Saint Garen is still protected, a holy sanctuary undisturbed. Make sure none of them ugly orcs go inside it. <laughs> The the villagers seem impressed, and they continue to whisper amongst themselves. Hey, yeah, I'm totally going to make sure it's, if it's desecrated, I'll undesecrate it. (laughs) You have it here. We even have a holy man with us to undesecrate if it's desecrated. Yeah. They they seem impressed, though some of them are wondering where this holy man came from. Mm -hmm. They're like... Did Grom have a fourth companion? <laughs> this is our good friend and companion who has been with us since the beginning, Neil Goblinson. Yep, that's me. I yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm old. Definitely starting to feel like the front man of our group. The hype man. I mean, I don't know these people. I don't know what you've been up to. So, you know. All right, let's go. So you make your way out to Monument Canyon once again, and you return to where you were before, and the orcs have long since been disposed of, so it's very peaceful, especially early in the morning. This is actually your first time inspecting the the tomb itself, I believe, up close. Mm -hmm. So uh, there's a pair of two wide stone staircases which lead up to the crypt entrance, which is a heavy set of double doors and there's a bas relief on top of those doors which is very weathered by time. It appears to be uh, St. Garen's coat of arms. There's kind of a shield shape and then there's like a sword and then you think you can see another sword and something above that but it's been very badly weathered by time so you can't really make it out too well and there are runes carved above the door but uh, none of you can read those look they might do they look like they might be similar to some of the other runes we were seeing yes hmm give me a refresher real quick how long ago was this garen guy alive i mean it was hundreds of years ago yeah what if what if the story's been mixed up a little bit and this isn't garen's tomb what's giving you that idea well I got this necklace here, and you notice it's a skull, not a golden helm. That's a bit ominous. Yeah, I'm wondering if maybe, like, somehow things got mixed up, and this is actually the tomb of the guy Garen killed, and it's, like, sealed to keep him from escaping? I mean, isn't that how legends usually work? Yeah. Yeah. So if that's the case, we 
don't want to go in there, right? Or, you know, we can and we can plunder them. I don't think it'll go over exactly well if we come back and tell them, oh no, you're all wrong, it was assumed to a bad guy, so we stole everything inside. And we don't go back. We don't tell them that, obviously. You know, I'm also wondering, like, if we should have looked up the iconography on those orcs. The Red Moon? Yeah, exactly. Look, I'm the researching type, I believe everything can be found in books. And you know why I believe that? Because you like to read books. Because it's true. Oh, yeah. Believe everything you read. Because I write it. I'm a scribe. Alright, well, let's check to see that the tomb's still sealed. This, the tomb is indeed sealed. In fact, it is sealed so tightly you're unable to uh, move the doors whatsoever. Oh, good. Well, then it's good. Well, then we know the arch haven't gotten insane. Yeah, that's all we were here to check on. Is there anything else around here? Yeah, there's around. a bunch of ruins further into the canyon, right? Yeah, but they're just like, there's a lump of stone sticking oh, out okay. of the ground, or like a stone pillar that's been worn smooth by So time. it's not like there's shells of buildings that are... No, it's just... Terrible. Okay. I'm going to look around the entrance a little bit more, see if I find anything out of place. Mm, nothing in so far as you can tell. I mean... There were orcs stomping around here not long ago, but uh, there's nothing lying on the floor or anything Wait, like that. Wait, what if that. you're eight? Why don't you hold maybe that medallion some kind of key to it or something? I hold out my medallion and try the door again. And you feel a little silly when nothing happens. That's what I figured. It's worth trying. I just figured I'd try like the dwarf. This is how you sound. <laughs> Are you making fun of me? Yes! A little. He's good at it. Well, that's it. all I can do. That's pretty par for the course, I guess. Because you are little, so there's not much else to make fun of. Oh, a short joke. I haven't heard that before. Well, it's because you're so far down, sometimes the sound has trouble reaching you. All right, well... All right, we'll continue that one, didn't I? I guess we just go back. I mean, we, we checked the place. That's all I really wanted um, to do. Honestly, I only concocted this whole thing to get him healed. So you weren't even planning on taking anything from inside? No. I mean... He wasn't. Well, that's good to hear. I mean, I promised. Look, I'm true to my word, but I might be a scoundrel, too. I can do both. I didn't give any word, so... You're gonna do just, like, a loop around the tomb, like, tap scene, make sure there's not, like, a secret entrance or, you know, some other kind of, um... Trap. Alright, so you go around, but you don't really notice anything unusual or out of place. The uh, the runes, by the way, they're all, they've all been in the same language. So the runes you found on the big stone, the ones you on saw the gate? on the gate, the uh-huh. one above the uh, the tomb itself, they're all in the same kind of language, as far as you can tell. Well, I'm out of ideas. Once one of us learns how to speak runic, I don't think we're going to know what this actually is. I guess I'll jot down the runes here into the journal next to the other runes and... So I have him written down in one place. We could consult. Uh, you think Brent Mr. Allwells? Yeah. He deciphered the other ones. All right, it's worth a try. Let's go find Brent. All right. So you head back to uh, the monastery where Mr. Arwell is resting, and uh, you notice that the wandering lords and ladies have been uh, packing up their camp all morning, and so they're getting ready to hit the road and head out. Oh, is this the last day? No. This is only day four. Day four or five. Gotcha. Hmm. So, you know, just, they're packing up early. They're going to leave tomorrow right after the game. It's going to an early start. Makes sense to me. Probably leaving today if they're packing up. They're not putting away all their performance stuff. Anyway, uh, Brent, we, uh, we needed to ask you about something. Oh, of course, anything for you. I, I owe you my life. Flip to the page that I wrote it down on in his journal that I still have. Is that my journal? What? No, don't worry about that. I mean, it is, but don't worry about that. I'll give it back. Sure, whatever. So, as you can see here, I found these runes. I was wondering if you are any better at reading these than me. You did decipher the other bit. Yeah, it, it, it took me a while, but I'd be happy to take a look at these if you would like. Can I hand him his my <laughs> journal. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> After everything that happened, it's far less exciting looking at these. What if I told you 
No, but don't worry, I'll, I'll be Those were to over the tomb of St. Mary. That makes sense. Is the language of the ancients in this area? Right. Yeah, I don't know why I thought that <laughs> language would be a unifying theme between everything. That's kind of silly. Good point. <laughs> uh, I mean, it'll take me some time. Uh, if you want to come back later, I'll... Uh, Excellent. Do you I'll want some prayer juice or anything? No, gods. <laughs> right, did they also give you prayer? <laughs> this is fine. Thank you. So you've already done more than enough for me, good sir. All right. Well, see you later. Wow, that guy really <laughs> likes you. He denied the prune juice. <laughs> he helped save his life, of course. Yeah. Well, I mostly just fell into a pit, and then you saved both of us. <laughs> but I'll take some credit in helping. I, I got. We got up there together. I tried. Glambeard is literally carrying the party. <laughs> All right. Is there anything else to do in this town? Is there anything I keep not thinking of that we? How about that mercenary? Well, I was I was interested in asking maybe why the lords and ladies are leaving so early. I guess maybe they know something we don't. Talk to them. I feel like they're just gonna be like the thing's almost over. But yeah, might as well pursue every lead. Yeah, but they're they've got two days worth, and they're leaving early. All right, so when you arrive, they're pretty much entirely packed up at this point. And when you, you ask, they're like, they tell you, uh, uh, it's just been, after all these incidents the past few days, uh, we feel like we should get out of town a little early. You know, there's been quite a bit more excitement than we were expecting, and we figure we'd like to hit the road and be on to the next town. You don't want to stay for the... Last day celebration? I figure that's how you get the majority of your customers. Ah, no, most people. They've already come and seen everything, you know. So, we're just going to head on out a little early. Seems to make sense to me. <laughs> I don't suppose uh, that the fortune teller lady is uh, maybe willing for one last visit before you up and take off? Uh, sure. Uh, you can find her in her wagon. I'm sure she wouldn't mind uh, seeing you before you head out. So uh, you head over to the fortune teller's wagon, and she's uh, got most of her stuff put away, and she's just kind of sitting there. Ah, welcome back. I were wondering. Y'all are packing up and leaving a bit early. I don't suppose it's because you had some kind of portent about more bad things to come. I'd be willing to pay you for your time if that's the case. No, it's just, uh, you know, when you go into town and there's so many dark events taking place, uh, in my experience, it's better for the outsiders to uh, be gone before they... Uh, before they start getting blamed. Particularly if they're damn dirty gypsies. <laughs> right in front of the freaking fortune teller. <laughs> That's Jeez. just the term! I didn't make it up! I'm not sure it's appropriate to be using it, though. I don't think you need those two adjectives. You're right. Damn an adjective. You're right. Those damned. Damn, those gypsies. <laughs> well, good luck on your travels. Though they do have, have a safe trip. Fine food. It's true. Thank you. Good luck to you and the games. Thanks. Thanks for, uh, you know, the fortune there. Get out. Safe travels. <laughs> What? I'm just using the proper vernacular. Charisma is just... <laughs> Out of this My world. dump stat! <laughs> Indeed! <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm average, so I don't have a problem with it either way. It's uh, getting close to noon now, and everyone's starting oh, to make their way over to the monastery. I have another great performance. Bless me, bud. I chose healing. healing today. Damn it! I have to... Oh, yeah, yeah you might as well heal him. Do you mind giving me some juice before I go? <laughs> I've had Gross. plenty of my own. Do you want to uh, get out of sight so we don't have to watch you juice him? I juice on the streets. <laughs> and then I this sleep on the streets. This is a family <laughs> friendly <laughs> podcast. He pulls out a food processor. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, bend over. He'll give you the juice. <laughs> Wait a minute. What kind of... Bendel, yes. he's bend over his brother. It's suppositories. <laughs> oh, I worked at a suppository. <laughs> or is that depository? What? I think I need to use the uh, repository. For the record, did that Tanner have a shop in town or anything? He did. 
I feel like we should investigate. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. Let's go check out the tanner shop. I mean, you guys just told me stories, but... By the power of the cleric's faith, the spell restores 1d6 hit points to one damage character, plus a number of points equal to the level of the caster. Okay. 1d6 plus 1? Yeah. 6. Yeah! Gron is back. Also, it is worth noting that you can use that to remove negative conditions from people instead of healing them. So, oh. for instance, you could heal Ari's leg if you wanted at some point. Though, I think they're good tomorrow, if I recall. It was two days. If it was two days, then I should be good today. No, it's only been one day. No, I... It was the one day that it happened, the and then I slept, day. and then it, that was yesterday, and now... Oh, we're yeah, yeah, you should four. be good. I think you're yeah. good, yeah. Hey, we're doing pretty good. Yeah. All right, so let's go check out the Tanner's house. Yeah. We have a little time before noon? Oh, yeah. Well, that's right. A little bit. Let's do that after. We can do that tomorrow morning, assuming something we else We can do it, it after. Or after the, after, okay. Yeah, there's right. well, plenty of time. If you serve. It's at noon. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. So everyone gathers before the monastery as usual, and Friar Yurik gives a brief speech. He, uh tells the townspeople that he knows everyone's been a little bit uh, riled up about the events of the past days, so uh, tonight the Brotherhood of St. Garen is going to patrol the town and uh, surrounding areas just to uh, make sure everything's safe and there's no straggling creatures that pass through the gate. Good news is the tomb of Garen's secure! Uh, everyone whispers a bit amongst themselves and seem kind of Relieved about that. Grong Glitterbeard checked himself. Made sure there was no orc scum, I hear. Uh, everyone, Imagine girls. everyone seems quite excited. Uh, you notice a, a group of villagers all clustered together who are all wearing little homemade armbands that depict a, a beard with a gem <laughs> in the middle. And they're You've all kind of like, like slapping each other on the shoulder and like pointing in Gron's direction. And I can't have fame. I'm going to make you ridiculously famous. <laughs> yes. You know what really sucks is you when I... If you win the contest, you'll have plenty of fame of your own. Oh, not if I have it my way. You'll be so famous, they'll bury you. What? Well, that fame. How do you manage to make a promise of something so wonderful sound like such a horrible threat? Just you wait and see. <laughs> Tone. I'm actually <laughs> kind of afraid. <laughs> worry for myself. Have a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you get well soon. <laughs> see? Yeah. I hope you don't fall down the stairs. It'd be a real... Right. <laughs> <laughs> with, uh, with the noonday speech concluded, the procession make their way back to the meadow to begin the uh, day's honor game. Uh, this time you see a number of targets set up, like a little oh archery range. <laughs> Who's got that <laughs> short bow? Uh, yeah, no, I don't. I don't? No. Uh, so, uh... He's got some decks, and uh, he's also... You also have a bow that you have fought with. That's how he killed the big yep. orc. That's right. I so, just sat there and <laughs> took all the hits while he shot him to death. Hey, quarterback needs a, you know... Linebacker, yeah. yeah. So, the fighters will take turns shooting at uh, progressively smaller targets. This is the test of the smaller bow. Smaller or further away? Uh, both. Varying size and range. Gotcha. And, uh... They provide a longbow to each of the contestants, just to use during the test, not uh, to keep. Not, not to, to keep. keep. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, well, kind of in the the same place as each day, they call Gron Glitterbeard, and the fans seem yep. very boisterous. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have to use it sideways? <laughs> He might hit, hit, hit like a great bow. <laughs> yeah, you don't have a hunter's bow or like yeah, but he's bow. super sh short. Do you have like a cherub's bow? Or the, the dwarves aren't actually limited by the size of the weapons the way like no, I, I figured. But yeah, big meaty hands like with the glove bow. <laughs> he might stand on a stool so he can be sure. <laughs> a step stool, not a full stool. So this is actually a ranged two hit roll that mm -hmm. you'll be making, not just. Uh, Dexterity roll, so any bonus you have from your class and level would apply. Well, it's like, arrow's not me kind of weapon, but uh, I'll give it to my best shot. Grah, 
Grrrr. Grrrr. You somehow, like, chop off your ear with a bowstring. <laughs> Snaps and slices my ear off. Call me Van Gron. You're like mm. Katniss in the trailers for um, Hunger Games, where she has a bulb behind her ear. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, that'll actually be a 16. All right. You strike true on the first target. Very close to the center. Quite impressive. Uh, your your cheering section is loud and boisterous with applause. For the second one, that'll be a 20. Not natural 20, a... Uh, what's it called? You get a culminated 20 or something? 20 like total? Modified. modified 20, thank you, that's the word. I but it's probably a negative 2. Oh, sorry, yeah. It you was said. at negative 2. Okay. But that's, so yeah, minus so 1, that'll be 18. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you strike true once again, very close to the center, and the, the applause only grows. Five more women get pregnant spontaneously. <laughs> 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 Grom hits true. Grom always So the true. last one will be at a minus 4? Correct. At 8? Let's do this. That'll be a 10. All right. So the, with the minus 3, that'll be a 10. All right. You strike true. It's kind of ah. close to the frame of the target, <laughs> but a hit's a hit, and the the applause is furious. <laughs> you, Ron is also, again, like kind of as, as you know, <laughs> pleased as anybody about that. You notice that your fans are actively booing... <laughs> The other competitors. No, that's not be like. <laughs> that's not any sportsman like. They're kind of starting arguments if they see anyone supporting. Kind of trying to throw my voice. I'm glad he made it because if he did it, I would have been really upset. <laughs> People have mock beards with quail eggs. To <laughs> <laughs> All right. Little children are like. Bindel Johnson. I kind of like, yeah. like stretch. Ah, yeah, go like, this one, buddy. <laughs> Go for it, Scrawny! <sighs> and then I pick up the bow and I just like knock and fire. In one smooth motion. Unless I can take an aim action. No, you can't. No rules against aiming? Come on. Ten. Oh no, twelve. Alright. You strike the target. And that's a fine hit! Woo! Yeah, it's a, it's a decent hit. Uh, minus two for the next. A nice natural one. Oh, uh, you missed the target completely. I should have blessed him. <sighs> and it uh, flies off into the distance. Damn die rolls. And everyone gives you kind of like a like a cursory applause, <laughs> you know, like, ah, oh, you did it, you tried it. Golf clap. <laughs> I very gently set the bow down, and then the quiver, and then I like storm off super pissed. <laughs> <laughs> Respecting the other people's things. So, uh... The games continue throughout the day, as per usual. As soon as I'm done, I'm like, go up to him, like, let's check out the tanners place. Oh, great. All right. So you, you make your way over to the now empty residence. Does, of, uh, does Ari? Yep. Yeah, Ari yeah, we, we get them, yeah. Well, I just want to make sure Ari didn't want to see his girlfriend. Ari does want to see his girlfriend, but he also wants to see what's going on with this tanner. She's not my girlfriend yet. We're just seeing each other. <laughs> Without our clothes on. <laughs> it's a casual <laughs> thing. All right. Well, so. it's Big Animar th- Animar thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Big Animar doesn't call back. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're getting no letters. <laughs> Big Animar runs for governor. <laughs> well, I'll leave it to your imagination. Yeah, so, so check out the Tanner's place. So the Tanner has, like, a pretty regular house for the, the village of Garrington, now abandoned Is on account of... Is it yeah. I'm mean, assuming his house is also his place of business. Right? Yes. Yeah, okay. And indeed, you can smell the uh, the tanning process from quite a distance. Is the door locked? The door is locked. That's me. That is you. You he are. He kicks the, the door in. No. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, like, who cares? Well, I'd rather. You know. Tanner was an asshole. Yeah, but we're still breaking an entry. You might want to do it a little bit stealthier than that. For sure. No. You want me to try a second time? What'd you roll? Five. I don't, I don't know if that like jams or anything. Can you just keep trying? Is that, yeah, with, I, is that with your tinkering? Yes. Oh, no. Yeah. Right. Oh, right, because that's the D6, right? You, you spend a little while attempting to pick it, but... Uh, it smells so no, bad. Yeah, no know, avail. Yeah, I don't know if, like, doors get jammed or whatever, so that's why I was like, yeah, just keep going. Uh, yeah, At which point, why are we rolling? Because you have to get it eventually. Well, time 
is a concern for one thing. Another fail. All right. Your tools are a little strained after uh, failing a few times. You can continue if you so choose. I want to see if there's any windows. There are windows in the tradition of old medieval houses. So, no glass. <laughs> this is the hole. I just climbed in through window. one of the windows. The shutters? <laughs> or... Yeah, yeah they're, they're shuttered up with wood. I take my sword and I just kind of hack out the, the window a little yeah. bit until I break it open enough to climb in. Or you like, <laughs> pry it. Yeah. Oh, wait, yeah, I have a crowbar. Yeah. Just, yeah. You, know, like, you have a crowbar. I have a crowbar. Yeah, you have a crowbar. I'm going to go, I'm gonna go to the window that's the, less, the least obvious and can be seen from the least number of directions and try and pry one of those open. All right. Open doors check. A five? That didn't work. It should, didn't work. Should we have one of the muscly ones? Go on, I'll give it a shot. I get a one. All right. You're good at everything. <laughs> you pry it open. It's been the better part of an hour, but you're in. <laughs> God, we're terrible at breaking into houses. I'm not, I'm not so sure that's a bad thing. It is. How are we going to have a steady stream of income if we ever become street thieves? We've gotten more money at doing. I said, if we make. become street thieves, well, why would we do that? I don't know. Just a possibility. We're I've read a lot of books on it. Are we though? We've done like one job, and you had to carry everyone out on your back. Okay, well, I'm pretty good at being an adventurer. Oh, la dee da, okay. Mr. Famous Man. And then I climb in through the window. <laughs> All right. Ari follows. I assume the others follow as well. Uh, the inside of the house is uh, pretty standard, but as you search it, you eventually find one room that is uh, locked as well. A uh, wooden door. Oh, God. Ari... <laughs> Do you want to try picking it, or should we just burst it? At least we're inside now, so, you know. Uh, Grant's going to... He'll probably break my tools, but I'm going to try and pick it. Reshutter as much as he can the door that they... The window they pried open. Sure. Just a a casual glance at one. One. All right, you unlock the door. Nice. Ah, The first first door must have been, like, bubblegum in it or something. (laughs) I'm telling you, it had some of that smelly tanner stuff in there. It was all sticky. That's probably... Yeah, that makes sense. Just touches it with his dirty, grimy... Wizard hand? Oh, wait a second. They were <laughs> in your mouth. <laughs> so, inside inside this small room, it's basically a, a little study of his. The smell is overwhelming because there's some uh, tanning chemicals in here. And you find two little vials of liquid stoppered up. And you also find two books. Ooh. Now this is your forte. <sighs> Can... From my knowledge, can a wizard's book be protected by spells? Theoretically. I mean, anything can technically be protected by spells, but... <laughs> God's gonna, like, hold his shield up. Alright, so one of the books is newer than the other, just based on appearance. Which would you like to open first? The old one. Alright, so you open it, and it's uh, written in English, so it's just a, a regular book. Good news. Uh, I know this language. That's it's good. English. Yeah, I can read it. It's Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> Grey beards. Uh, it appears to be some kind of book about uh, Tormek Garin. A very uh, fairly old book. All right. What's the other book? That is a spell book. Ah, uh, here's is, the one we were looking for. It is Relum's spell book. That's his name. It doesn't matter if I tell you since he's dead now. Can you combine spell books? Like, can I take copy the spells from that one into mine? Or uh, you would have to copy his spells into yours, and it takes time. All so. right. So for now, I just have two spell books. Yes. <clears throat> What's in there? Uh, it takes time to study. Oh, okay. Everyone writes their yeah, 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 stuff yeah, in their different. own way. Okay. So. so I'm gonna look through this other book a little bit. All right. So right now you're just kind of leafing through it. Uh, it appears to be a history book. Uh, Based on Tormek Garin. Let's let's examine these more closely once we're out of here. All right. Did we find anything else? Yeah. So there's, a, there's the two vials of stoppered liquid. Is there anything else of interest? Nope. That's it. Kind of a red color. Were they? Are they the same color as the potions? <clears throat> Slightly different. Okay. Similar. All right. 
Hmm. Uh, I'm going to look around the rest of the house before we leave, just to see if there's anything else. Okay. To see if the, the tenor was actually murdered and this wizard took his place. And <laughs> yeah, well, there's probably a basement, too. Every wizard has a basement. Mm. Even if it's above ground, right? You don't find any legitimate tanner corpse or anything like that, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much everything of value you find, despite spending a little longer to All right. uh, well, then, search uh, the premises. I'll unlock the front door and then leave that way. Okay. So climbing through a window. So the, uh, the games not? have concluded for the night, and the, the sun is slowly starting to set as they prepare for the evening feast. I'm going to go back to the shack and just read the book for I'll, the evening. I'll bring you some dinner. Thanks. Okay. Um, should I ask the monster if they know anything about the potions, or is there an alchemist? Uh, you don't know if there is or isn't an alchemist. It's unlikely in a town this size, but, you know, with the fair going on, it's not impossible. Uh, you could ask the brothers if you wanted to. So, up to you if you want to go straight <clears> to the <throat> monastery or try to find a alchemist. Um, I mean, I could check with the brothers, right? You they can. know anything about, and then like, well, it's, they're, about... they're potions, so if, you know, they, they could make them, or they could make trips into the city to buy them with, you know, uh, offerings and tithes and stuff like that, or, you know, maybe yeah, there could be, another, maybe they make them themselves, you know, because okay. they are, you know, it's a holy order, they could have their own clerics who... Alright, so, uh-huh. you get to the monastery, and they direct you to, uh, one of the brothers who's a monk, more of the uh, cleric persuasion, because most of the brothers of St. Garen are actually fighters. Uh, <laughs> right, because he's the big, you know, the yeah. battle guy. Yeah, and he kind of takes a look at the potion, and he sort of studies it a bit, and he's like, I believe that these are potions of healing. Uh, unfortunately, if you can't ask the crafter, the only really way to tell is to drink it, and uh, <laughs> if it's not healing, well... What happens, happens. But, uh, you know, I'd, I'd bet a copper on this being a potion of healing. <laughs> but not a silver. <laughs> One copper. Oh, boy. All right. Well, you know, uh, thanks. <laughs> is that how potions tend to work in RPs? You just If you don't already know what it is, game, yeah. or if you have... Uh, there are some, depending on the GM and the system, there are some <clears throat> methods for testing potions sometimes. Like, one of the go-tos for Ian's... Ian and like his groups is he'll he'll like catch a cockroach or something, yeah. put it in a jar, and then like drop her in some of the potion yeah. to see what happens to the cockroach. Okay. Yeah, I was hoping I'd find like. And in letters. some in some like D and D, you can identi- use the identify spell in order to tell if they are. Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Classically, though, they're a crapshoot. Yeah. Okay. Because I just want to know, like... And there are some that are specifically made to look like other potions, so that when you drink them, you know, it, it does something different. Alright, are we doing anything else tonight, or are we just doing the feast and then, uh, pass into the next day? Yeah, I think that's all we have on our docket. I don't, I feel like we're missing something, but I don't know what it is. Like there's a little thread we forgot? Yeah. That's why you wanted, another part of the reason why you wanted to go see the tomb, right? Yeah. That was one of the things we haven't checked. Oh, well, well oh. we can check in with our yeah, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's do that tomorrow morning. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because that's when we'll have the time to go back there. Anyways, yeah, if we need to. Night, yeah, and then I can keep reading this book to see if I find anything. Yeah, can, you know, remember that uh, the medallion and all that, and maybe see if you find some weird... Oh, yeah, does the... Does the city have, like, a library? No. Okay. Do the brothers of the monastery have some books? They're fighters, dude. They don't know how to read. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Enough. <laughs> All concussed. <laughs> Permanently concussed. So, uh, Bindel has retired to the shack for the night. The rest of you, are you partaking in the evening feast? Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in, um... You gotta hit up Big Animar again. You might not ever see her after tomorrow. I'm going to put in 30 coppers tonight. Nice. And, uh... Grab a plate of food to bring back to Bindel. Ari's gonna make the rookie myself. mistake and eat and then fuck, so he's gonna eat and then go look for his lady friend. Alright. Oh, Do right. you uh, donate anything to Ten the. Copper. Alright, how about Neil? Yeah, gonna give anything to the brothers? Are you running though? If uh, Grun's willing he's to. He's got a ton of copper. Oh, okay. I'll just. Uh, so it was 388, so I'll give 15. Yeah, there you go. <clears throat> now he's averaged out to ten the last two nights. 
All right, so you uh, you enjoy the evening feast. Uh, Ari is able to find Big Animar, who is uh, very happy to see him and uh, mm-hmm. eager to spend some time with him, getting to know him better back at the tavern, where she has a much nicer room than the little <laughs> shack, to be honest. That we're sharing between like four people. She is a giant woman. She is. So uh, as the feast is concluded, they start setting up the bonfire. You want to hang around for a bit or head back to, straight back to the shack? Or did you stay after you dropped the food off? No, uh, oh. Gron wanted to at least take uh, accompany some of the brothers in the, on their patrolling for the early part of the night as long as he could still get a full sleep after. But he wants yeah. to partake in some of that. Sure. Uh, Neil? kind of want to ask the locals if it's normal that the uh, richer people leave a day early. There's not richer. Oh, that's, that's the traveling. That's the, oh, that's that's the right. circus. Yeah, that's they were right. called yeah. the lords and ladies. Oh, they weren't actually. Right. Yep, yep, yep. Never mind. I knew that. <laughs> well, it's been two weeks. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it took me a minute, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I, I'll go to bed. All right. So, uh... So Grunt stays for the bonfire and then joins with the patrol. Oh, um, I'm gonna... I'm eating a ration, oh, yeah. by the way. Just sure. sorry. Have something. Well, no, that's right. Plate. Hey, I put in some extra coppers and then oh, watch okay. a whole plate of food. Cool. So I'll eat that. All right. That's probably better than rations. So everyone else has dispersed, and Gron is at the bonfire, and then you hear <clears throat> quite a commotion raised, and you see two of the, uh, brothers of St. Garen. Uh, dragging a man over to the bonfire, and uh, you you recognize the man once he gets closer as uh, Mikhail Vetter, one of the uh, two competing fighters who was uh, a favorite the, uh, the prior day, and uh, they they loudly declare to uh, Friar Uric as they pull the man forward that he was caught in the abbey attempting to steal the mantle of Saint Garin. And the the villagers kind of form a angry mob, and they start beating the shit out of him, basically, and just uh, tossing stuff at him. And eventually, the uh, the brothers kind of drag him away from the uh, the mass of angry villagers and drag him to the uh, the stocks in front of the monastery to uh, hold him there for the night to uh, face judgment in the morning with one of the brothers standing guard to make sure he isn't murdered in the yeah. night. <laughs> uh, Gron's gonna edge up to Brother Yurik. Does, uh, does that ever... Does that happen often at all? Well, not often, obviously. This contest is only once a year, but has that ever happened before? Never, as, as long as I've been here. And to think the, the son of a former champion of the games would perform such a heinous deed. And he was doing pretty well, too. He was. He was. I... Uh, Fell a little behind in points, though. I guess he felt desperate. He must have. So I'm becoming. Absolutely. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not sure what we'll do with him, to be honest. I'll have, I'll have to meditate on it tonight. I wish I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Can't I? He's yeah, with my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, in dwarf culture, it's customary to pulp the end of the thief. He keeps the end, but he can't use it for thieving no more, so... Hmm. Not saying that's what you should do, it's up to you. It seems an appropriate punishment. I'll I'll take it under advisement, Gron. Thank you. I know some cultures would like to chop it off, but then they don't have the ability to do work, and so... <laughs> so they can only resort to more thieving. A good point you raise. Thank you, my friend. And thank you for your help on the patrols. Of course, I haven't found this shield like I did. It'd be of good use if we do encounter any of those creatures. Indeed. So offer what help I can. So uh, the patrols go uneventfully. It seems the creatures have been uh, stopped from coming over to this world with the destruction of the gates. And uh, you don't spot any stragglers, at least. So, will Gron retire for the evening? Yeah. So everyone turns in for the night. Is anyone missing help? You would. I had nine out of eleven. All right.
What fate awaits Mikhail Vetter? What secrets lie in the Tanner's book? And who will win the Garen Games? Tune in next time to Dorka Realms to find out!